in this uh, second part of our uh, second module, the module on point pattern analysis, we will cover some formal point process models. And since we will primarily focus on exploratory analysis in, in this module, we won't go into a lot of detail, but it's important that you know that there is a wide range of formal models out there to try to uh, fit particular point patterns. What we'll do in this part is first start with a formal uh, specification of what we mean by complete spatial randomness, the frame of reference, the null hypothesis if you wish, um, and then we'll look at some alternative hypotheses. Just as we did when we discussed spatial autocorrelation, we had the null hypothesis of spatial randomness and then the alternative of positive and negative spatial autocorrelation. Here the alternatives are either clustered patterns or regular or dispersed patterns. And then we'll just very briefly um, give some examples of more advanced models without going into too much detail. So let's start with complete spatial randomness, or CSR as it's referred to. And basically CSR, as I mentioned, is a standard of reference. You can think of it as a uniform distribution where each location in, let's just think of a unit square, each location in that unit square has the same probability that an event lands on it. And in addition, so this is first requirement of equal probability, but in addition, the fact that an event lands at a particular location does not affect the probability of an event landing at other locations. So the event locations are in fact independent. So these two are actually very strict requirements, but they are formalized in what is referred to as a homogeneous planar Poisson process. So planar means it's points in a plane, and Poisson is the particular distribution that uh, drives this. And a so-called Poisson point process um, describes the distribution of points in an area as following a, the classic distribution for counts, counts of events. And we already saw that an important parameter, an important characteristic of our point pattern is the, the intensity, which is the number of points divided by the area. But you can also flip this around and say that the number of points in a given area equals the intensity multiplied by that area. So um, if your intensity is five points per square kilometer, and if you have one square kilometer, then you can expect five points. If you have two square kilometers, you can expect 10 points. So formally then, the number of points in a given area is modeled as a Poisson distribution with mean lambda for the intensity times the area uh, of A in this, in this expression. Just to recap, in case you're a little rusty, a Poisson distribution is an ideal distribution for counts, but counts that are not too large. If they're too large, then the Poisson is not appropriate. The uh, distribution is completely characterized by one single parameter, the mean of the process. In our case, that mean, as I mentioned, is lambda times the area A. Another important characteristic of the Poisson distribution, and actually quite limiting one, is that the mean equals the variance. That's why I mentioned that the distribution is completely characterized by one parameter, uh, the mean. So formally then, the probability of getting n points, n events in an area A, of that being equal to a given value y, say 5 or 10 or 20, is the exponential of the mean, negative exponential of the mean, to be precise. So the exponent exponential e to the power minus lambda a times the mean to the power y, where y is the number of points. So the mean, again, is lambda times a to the power y, and that um, divided by y factorial. 
Now, a very interesting case, and one that will come back uh, several times in the formal analysis of point patterns later on, is what is the probability of not having any points in a given area A. And this simplifies readily by setting y to 0, and what is left in the expression is a negative exponential of the mean of the process minus lambda times a. And just to make this a little more concrete, um, here's an example of a distribution that follows the uh, Poisson distribution with mean 2. So you see quite a few is zeros and then modes by 1 and 2 and then it drops off very quickly. Whereas if you have a distribution with mean 5, you see it almost looks like a, a normal distribution, like a bell shape. So in the context of our point patterns, if we have complete spatial randomness with, let's say, an intensity of 5 points per square kilometer, um, in theoretical analysis, we'll often be very interested in how many points are present in a given circle. A circle, for example, centered on a given event or centered on a given reference point. So the area of the circle, if the radius is r, would be pi r squared. So for example, if we have r as 0.01, the area would be roughly 0.03. And so then we can calculate, using our previous result for the Poisson distribution, what is the probability that there are no points in the circle. And, and think of this just running ahead. Later on, we'll see in some of the nearest neighbor statistics, we want to know what is the probability that there is a nearest neighbor within a given distance. So we'll compute that, we'll estimate that by taking the complement of the probability of not having any points in a circle. And, and that's very easy to calculate. As we saw, it's e to the minus lambda a, in our case here, that is 5 times 0.03, so roughly uh, 0.85, 85% that given the intensity of 5 points per square kilometer that there would be no points in a circle with a radius of 0.01. So that's a very basic concept that we'll use several times later on. Of particular interest, and I mentioned this um, in the last lecture in the context of spatial autocorrelation and specifically spatial randomness, is that very often in spatial statistics, uh, it's near impossible to get clean analytical results unless one makes a whole host of assumptions, many of which tend to be unrealistic. So we then resort to simulating the null hypothesis, in this case simulating complete spatial randomness, as a way of constructing a reference distribution for the statistics. And there are actually two ways of doing that, two basic ways, and they differ in the extent to which that the number of points, the total number of points, is held fixed or the total number of points is itself random. So if the total number of points is held fixed, then simulating complete spatial randomness essentially boils down to drawing two random numbers on a uniform distribution one for the x-coordinate and one for the y-coordinate. So if we want to simulate 50 points, we draw 50 pairs of x-y uniform random numbers, and those x-y's are their coordinates. In contrast, if we want the uh, total number of points itself to be random, then we need to draw that total from a Poisson distribution with a given uh, mean, and that mean is related to the intensity of the process and the area under consideration. So, and then after that, we proceed in the same way. So the difference can be illustrated if we look at these uh, two graphs. These are illustrations on, an, on a unit square, the classic type of case of a um, completely spatial random process on the left uh, with 50 points total and on the right with 100 points total. And so, uh, you see that it, it can be very misleading to interpret these patterns visually because you might be tempted to identify clusters in the points because a few points are particularly close together. 
But in fact, both of these are completely random point patterns. And then using the second approach, uh, we first, on the left, we draw um, how many events we might get from a Poisson distribution with mean 50, and then we allocate these randomly in space. And in the left case, there's 53 that actually resulted. On the right is the same uh, procedure, but taking a mean of 100, and then we end up with 91 points. So the main difference between these two is whether we want the total number of points itself to be varying according to a particular distribution, in this case a Poisson distribution, or whether we want to keep that total number fixed. Now, as we already discussed when we talked about spatial autocorrelation, spatial randomness is actually not that useful. It's, it's basically a, a frame of reference, and sp complete spatial randomness in the point pattern is actually not a natural process, and there are very few actual processes that have been identified to actually follow this kind of pattern. So it's actually not very interesting. As I said before, you cannot explain randomness, so if it's purely randomness, random, you might as well go home. But it's very important as a point of reference. It's very important in uh, the sense of forming the null hypothesis of complete spatial randomness, a null hypothesis that we then will be interested in rejecting in favor of either a clustered pattern or a regular or more dispersed pattern.